Sam Cedar on the Majority Report. Joining me now, Attorney Seth Goldstein. He is a partner at Julian Mirror Singla and Goldstein in New York. Uh, he has uh, he is uh, representing the Amazon Labor Union and Trader Joe uh, United uh, uh, workers as well. Uh, uh, Seth, welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, so. Uh, a couple of days ago, uh, we're actually recording this um, uh, about uh, on, on Saturday of uh, this prior week. But um, this last week, Amazon became the third major uh, corporation to uh, challenge the National Labor uh, Relations Board and its constitutionality. Take us back to where this started. It started with SpaceX, uh, Elon Musk's um, space corporation, I guess. Uh, w w walk us through this. Actually, it started before SpaceX. It started really with the um, election of the Amazon Labor Union in 2022, because during the after the election, Amazon brought objections to the National Labor Relations Board and they started bringing up these issues in their objections regarding the um, violations of the National Labor Relations Board. And this quickly caught on to right-wing media. It was in the Wall Street Journal. I believe some of the Republican um, Congress um, men uh, started questioning the National Labor Relations Board. So I think the genesis of that was with um, that election, and then it came over to SpaceX more recently. And we should say there's also sort of, uh, we're in, in an environment, uh, if you will, in sort of a, a milieu where the um, uh, uh, conservatives, Republicans, the many of the conservative courts are beginning an assault on the administrative st state. And it's coming out in the context of the uh, uh, the non-delegation uh, uh, principle or the Chevron doctrine also under assault. We recently had a case that was argued in front of the Supreme Court. We're going to find that uh, the results of that, I guess, in June or so. Uh, there was also a case, uh, um, SELA, I believe, I can't I know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, against the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and JARCSI, which was a case that is challenging uh, the authority of the SEC. All right, so but let's go to uh, SpaceX is the first one that really sort of like um, uh, Amazon introduces this idea. SpaceX, apparently there was some employees who uh, wrote a letter the, saying that they were concerned about Elon Musk's um, uh, stewardship of that company and they were fired. They went to the National Labor Relations Board. Uh, SpaceX in uh, part of their defense was to uh, question the constitutionality of the National Labor Relations Board. Before we get to what SpaceX did, where, from what statutory authority, uh, just give us a little bit of history, the, the board itself and the National Labor Relations Act that uh, created it. So the National Labor Relations Act was uh, created in 1935. It was a um, law that was a compromise um, really between labor and management, because at the time there were national strikes and there, the thought was that, um, you know, you, you needed a process in order to protect employees' rights and also create a, institutionalize the conflict between labor and management. Uh, the law has been in effect for 89 years. There were changes in 1947 called Taft-Hartley, but the law has pretty much remained the same, which provides its own problems because the law never envisioned tech workers and other types of workers that were not around in 1935. But for the most part, it's worked. And um, the issue has been, I think, that up till now, at least in the last 70 years or 60 years, the National Labor Relations Board hasn't really done a lot. And the penalties are very, very light, and uh, the board, for the most part, has been very aggressive. So now that the board is going back to the principles of the 1930s, which is to encourage um, organizing and unionizing, um, all of a sudden the right wing has a problem with it. 
And that's what I think the genesis is, that uh, when the women at SpaceX X spoke out, Elon Musk uh, immediately employed a union-busting law firm called Morgan Lewis. Um, Morgan Lewis represents Amazon, Trader Joe's, Tesla, as well as SpaceX to do their dirty work. And uh, we should say that there was um, the law was passed in 1935. My understanding is in 1937, I think it was, uh, the Supreme Court essentially um, heard a case as to the constitutionality of the National Labor Relations Board and and decided, and I think it was a 5-4 decision, <clears throat> that yes, it passes constitutional muster. So this is this has been adjudicated, uh, of course. We have a court that just reversed a 50-year uh, uh, individual uh, a right, an individual right that's existed in this country for 50 years. So um, I'm not uh, convinced that they're necessarily bound by, in their minds, by a 90-year-old precedent. But uh, with that said, give us, uh, walk us through what the case that um, the SpaceX is trying to make here. M my understanding is there's essentially three points that they're doing. Um, steel, steel man their case to a certain extent, if you could, to the extent that one can without contemplating who sits on the Supreme Court. Well, if I, and also with a straight face, because these are ridiculous arguments. First is that um, the law um, is unconstitutional because the president can't remove ALJs and board members that they have um, merit board protection. And uh, they believe that that violates the separation of powers, that the president should be able to remove these individuals. The second issue is... Uh, let me just, I just want to stay there for a second. So uh, you have, what, is it six members of the National Labor Relations Board? Uh, or five members of five the members. National Labor Board and um, administrative law judges who are basically fact finders for the agency that look at the cases before it goes to the National Labor Relations Board. So SpaceX is arguing that uh, it's uh, unconstitutional because you need cause to fire them as opposed to simply at will or at whim, I guess. But but don't we have civil service um, like uh, workers like, I mean, tens of thousands of civil service workers in the government who also you cannot dismiss without cause? Absolutely. And judges can't be dismissed without, you know, being impeached. I mean, the whole purpose of these rules are to guarantee the independence of these judges. So it seems to me to be ridiculous to say that they're unconstitutional because we're trying to give independence to these judges to make decisions that may, you know, not actually agree with the National Labor Relations Board with the president, whoever the president is, or, um, you know, with the whims of, of the public demand. I mean, you want your judges to be independent, right? I, I w uh, one would think. Um, and we should also say this is where that case regarding uh, the uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau uh, becomes somewhat relevant in, in the seal of law, uh, because it, it, even in addressing the question of the constitutionality of the, the Consumer Financial Protection uh, Bureau. It, it said that um, if you have an agency or uh, uh, expert agencies, this one being in labor uh, law, um, they, can, uh, it, they uh, reiterated that it's legitimate that they can only be removed by good cause by the president. And so this is, this is not that long ago. <laughs> I mean, we're talking well, a matter of months that they have basically reiterated this principle. Yeah, I mean, this is a, you know, this is not some grand constitutional issue. You can always find fault with a brief that starts off with the quote with Alexander Hamilton and the Federalist Papers. I mean, really, are we dragging up 18th century principles, which may be good for a, a modern day agency that's worked for 89 years? I mean, um, it, it's rather fishy, right? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, that, but that's the era that we're living in, right? Like, the, the, this is where uh, the fishiest of claims can get to the Supreme Court, and they can 
ignore what they said six months later. Now, I, I don't know if that's going to happen in this case, but it is, I guess it's the magnitude of the threat, or I should say the implications of right. this threat that, that are really um, at play here. But before we get to that part of it, um, let's uh, talk about the second uh, claim. That is that it violates the Seventh Amendment right to trial by a jury. Right. This is an extraordinary position because basically Elon Musk is saying and Trader Joe's and I guess Amazon is saying that before you impose any penalties on us, uh, consequential damages, um, in the case of uh, Trader Joe's, the, the right to uh, get reimbursed to 401k benefit that they were deprived of while the union people got, uh, non-union people got it that we have to now have a trial. Well, there's problems with that. Number one is the legislation never included uh, um, trials. We in the labor bar would love a, a, um, the right to um, to sue, um, you know, a, a company individually. We don't have that in the um, right of action. We don't have that in the legislation. So, what are they worried about? And also, it's important to point out that the federal courts have jurisdiction over the board. So someone that's not happy with the um, with the rulings can always go to federal court and they can go all the way up to the Supreme Court to so appeal. OK, that? and so let me uh, let me just uh, 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 unpack this a little bit for for folks who are less uh, aware of this. So there are instances like you say, um, if the National Labor Relations Board determines that there has been unfair labor practices or there's been unjust firings uh, as, as retribution, maybe for, for union organizing, they can not only say you got to give them your back, their, their job back. You not only got to give them back pay, but right. uh, maybe they suffered uh, some type of medical condition because of this uh, or they lost 401k payments. You do, we got to make them whole in this instance. And uh, SpaceX is arguing, well, if you're going to do that, uh, you need to take us in front of a jury, uh, 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 you know, you need to take us to trial with a jury as opposed to an administrative judge. But this, I mean, and, and again, like you say, there's no cause of action. I mean, I would imagine it would be a, a fantasy of yours to be able to go and take Trader Joe's and uh, do discovery on them and to sue them for uh against the national labor relations act because it's it's quite clear there's violations here they right. their whole strategy is just to play out the clock i mean that might be a good trade <laughs> if you could uh you, you'd be in the plaintiff's attorney uh business and um i i I'm, I'm surprised that they would do that but don't we also have administrative aspects of this across the government in many respects Yes, in every agency, in the Department of Labor, um, you know, EPA, there are all types of um, administrative law judges that um, have been doing their job professionally for many, many decades. And the fact of the matter is, I mean, if you want me to, I could talk about the consequences. Please. That if... Elon Musk and, and the Federal Society and Heritage have their way, and um, a judge issued a preliminary injunction, even if it was for, on, on this issue, even if it was um, just for SpaceX, um, it would bring the machinery of the National Labor Relations Board to a halt. Um, that would mean that administrative law judges could no longer issue decisions, that they are in a sense unconstitutional. So if they're unconstitutional, then I imagine that employers will go and seek injunctions in other courts in order to stop these um, unlawful proceedings that they would that they would tell the court. And then they might even go for restitution against people that got awards from the board because they would consider that to be unlawful retroactively absolutely i and mean they, theoretically you could go back 80 years 
Yeah, and six years in New York, uh, you know. Oh, okay, so it's a, there's a statute of limitations. But, uh, yeah, I, I but I mean, so if I got an award in 2018 from the board, collected it, um, you know, that company could be at my doorstep saying, I want my money back. And, you know, wh wh where would that leave people? I mean, they have they, – essentially what you're saying is you have no rights. There's another issue here that I think is very important and I think really worries me. It hasn't been talked about. Wait, what I want to just get to the third claim, if we can, okay. of, of, of SpaceX so we can sort of uh, put their sort of like full case uh, to rest. Uh, but they also argue ultimately that – the separation of powers is being violated because there's an executive, judicial, and legislative functions within the the National Labor Relations Board. And I guess that's, you have the question of like uh, the non-delegation principle as to whether the National Labor Relations Board can assess what is a unfair labor practice or what's the best, um, and, and what's the best remedy if they find that there's an unfair labor practice um, and, uh, I guess, uh, executive is that they actually carry these things out. I mean, so w what is, uh, what is your sense of, 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 what's your response to that argument? So that's really an attack on what's called 10 J, um, injunctions. Um, the current process at the board is that, that if the board decides that you, need an injunction that means someone that has unlawfully been fired um and that they have to be brought back to work then what happens is the board um that the region the region where the case is brought um goes to the um general counsel jennifer abruzzo for permission to do it and then jennifer abruzzo has to go to the board to get approval as well. And then once that approval is provided, then the um, region can seek an injunction. So that's their argument with the third prong of their argument. It's not a really great argument because number one, the law firm that's bringing this lawsuit uh, um, has two former board members, John Ring and Philip Miscamara, and a board member, Harry Johnson III. And they all went through this process and they didn't have a problem with it when they were working for the National Labor Relations Board. There's also walls between these aspects of the agency. And... Um, you know, these walls have been around for a long time. So there isn't a um, situation where there's um, undue influence by the region on the on the full board. Um, so I don't understand what the issue is, except they don't like the decisions of the board. Right. OK, so let's um, uh, so th that's the, the case. And you did a good job of, of uh, presenting it with a straight face. Um, what uh what what are the implications of if the court uh i mean like where is this in uh the uh the legal process at this point and then where where could it go and what could happen okay so in spacex um as of yesterday the judge had or the day before the judge in texas transferred the case to California, to the Central District of California. Yesterday, Morgan Lewis lawyers filed a 56-page mandamus to the Fifth Circuit claiming that the judge made a erroneous decision by transferring it. So they are just spinning paperwork to try to keep it in Texas because they think that in Texas, they would get a fav favorable result. I will also say that I am very troubled by the fact that they went to Texas originally and not California where the um, firing occurred because they were 
engaged in what we call in the legal profession forum shopping. Right. They're Ooh. looking for judges. Uh, we know that like, you know, and, and I think uh, my audience understands that, you know, federal judges that come from a specific state, even if they're federal judges, um, the the senators there have a, an undue influence as to who be, gets nominated in those areas. They can withhold a blue slip, et cetera, et cetera. So these jurisdictions tend to be much more conservative. Uh, much more of these judges have been appointed by uh, uh, Trump over the years or Bush over the years or people who are hostile to labor rights. OK, so uh, it goes if it winds its way up through the case, like it, let's say just even if. Uh, I think that's the Fifth Circuit uh, in Texas. Let's say the Fifth Circuit decides that, yes, the National Labor Relations Board is unconstitutional because one of these arguments are compelling. Um, what happens then? It would cause chaos. Um, we were worried up till a couple of days ago that the um, judge in Texas might issue what's called a preliminary injunction. And we were concerned that if a preliminary injunction was um you know was was uh issued issued that the not only would the trial that's set in california for march 5th on spacex stop but also at that point like i said before um match the management bar would be going to other courts seeking injunctions against trials that are currently occurring at the board there probably would be an injunction against the board members issuing any further decisions at the board. So all of these things were very, very troublesome in SpaceX. So let's talk about Trader Joe's. In Trader Joe's, um, there is a trial that's occurring in Hartford, Connecticut in region one. It involves the Hadley store, which was the first Trader Joe's United store that organized. And at the beginning of the trial on January 16th, Morgan Lewis's attorney, Chris Murphy, and Kelsey Phillips, who previously worked as an honors attorney um, at the board, um, amended what's called an answer, and they included the SpaceX arguments but they never filed um, formally an amended answer. So the only reason we found out about it was because some of our members were present and reported back to us that Chris Murphy was questioning the National Labor Relations Board's constitutionality. So it's possible that this is happening in Trader Joe's. So like uh, broader strokes for us here, what, 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 is, is it possible we're going to see a similar assault uh, uh, from Trader Joe's on the National Labor Relations Board in Connecticut? And in which case um, we, and again, this is a federal court, um, in which case that same danger exists? So let me be clear about this. Um, what Trader Joe's did was they filed what's called an affirmative defense, which they then can appeal through the National Labor Relations Board, up through the federal courts to the national uh, to the Supreme Court, theoretically, um, and this has also been done in the with Amazon. So with Amazon, because I represent Amazon Labor Union, we have a trial set um, in Brooklyn regarding um, unlawful terminations of Amazon workers who were engaged in concerted activity after the 2022 election. And also we have currently um, a complaint issued regarding some of the changes that were made after the election. So a couple of days ago, the attorneys for Amazon also issued an amended answer in which they included the SpaceX um, argument. So a similar similar dynamic. All right, so uh, big picture here, because uh, we just got a, a, a about a minute left. Um, big picture, this is something that we can anticipate to start to see, I would imagine, 
from all, you know, uh, more than just these three uh, corporations. This is a question that they're driving to either be answered at a um, a circuit court level, in which case it would it could it could wreak havoc at the very least within that circuit, which makes up multiple states, um, depending on which one it is. Um, and then it would, I would imagine, have to go rather quickly to the Supreme Court because you can't have one National Labor Relations Act in Texas, Louisiana, and you know whatever it is, and and and, um, and and then a different one that exists in California or in Minnesota, um, and then I guess it's in front of uh, the Supreme Court, and then. I, I don't know. It's it it, it it feels like it's a roulette wheel sometimes as to um, uh, what this uh, Supreme Court will do. Um, last word in terms of what we should be watching yeah. for, uh, uh, broadly speaking. Yeah, I want to be very clear. This is not a constitutional issue. This is an assault on worker protections and our labor movement. They're not happy about the successes our labor movement has had in organizing. This makes the 2024 election very important because I believe that the extreme right wing is banking on Trump winning the election. They can clear out the administrative law judges um, that have um, civil service protection and really um, destroy the regulatory framework in the United States. So don't believe the lies about this being a constitutional issue. This is an assault on workers. Seth Goldstein, Julian, Amira, Singlet, and Goldstein, uh, thanks so much for your time today. Really appreciate it.